the company of curlews. Chapter 10 Cheese and Pineapple The sun either, I want to have my party in the eagle. I don't care if it's too small. We should have it in the rugby club, she says. I can invite everyone then, she says. I don't want everyone, I say. It was going to be my 80th birthday party. December the 30th, 1940, the day my good mother gave birth to me. Like Caesar I was. She must have had a hard time, poor love. Eva knew it was probably my last and wanted to make something of it. The oncologist, why they don't just call him the cancer doctor? Well, she had told us six months earlier I had been given three months to live. Pancreatic. But I was hanging in there for some reason. Painkillers and a load of drugs every morning. Stubborn dada, I want to make it special. She broke down crying. Come on now, Cariad. I took her in my arms. Please listen to me. I don't want to fuss. I will love it even more. This place has memories. As long as you and Bedwyr are there, that's all that matters. Well, okay. But I'm putting on a bit of a buffet, she says. I don't care, and there will be free drinks for the boys. Wonderful, I say. Cheese and pineapple on sticks like Mam used to make. She laughs, then starts to cry again. Oh, Dada, she says, I miss Mam. I know, I say, fighting back the tears myself. The party had gone on late into the night, eating and drinking. The friends I wanted came, we had a sing-song, few beers, chat about how it was back in the day. <laughs> Definitely too much cheese and pineapple to be sure. Eva put me to bed. More than a little bit drunk, but I was a content drunk. I gave in without a fight. Too much cheese, doll. I tell my darling daughter, touching her soft under forearm. Sleep now, Dada. It is a good night. Love you so much. She squeezes my hand and moves towards the bedroom door. Going home now, Dada. Tired. Long day, yeah? Love you, Branwen Cariad. The door clicks shut. Eva, I call. Oh, I got her name wrong. I lie down on my back, my head swimming in the alcohol of the night. I quietly belch indigestion. Sorry, I say. Is no one there? My eyes shut. I can hear myself snoring. I mustn't make a noise. I'll wake the baby. And then Branwen will have cross words with me. I turn onto my side. Sorry. I say to her again and drift into a dream, a dream of going out one more time onto the river to catch again one last salmon. I see myself down by the bascule bridge, drifting with the tide, dragging the net behind. I smile to myself in my dream, and from the depths of the river of vortex twists and nightmare of ghouls and white horses and water nymphs and monsters and seals and curlews, all springing up from a mythical subterranean world, all calling out my name. I try to wake myself. I try to scream. I'm awake in my own dream. I pull back the curtains of my bedroom window and lean in on the windowsill I stare out into the light pollution of the street lamps flooding onto the garden stage before me. On the small front grassy lawn a spotlight finds a lonely orchid sitting serenely upright like a long-necked swan in summer. 
the spotlight diffuses, gives a softer edge, into this light gracefully floats another orchid, their curved necks entwine into a perfect love heart, foreheads touch, they bow gracefully to each other, I knowingly smile and close my eyes. I'm outside my shed, coracle on my back, paddle sits in crossed behind me, knocker in its place strapped in, I'm ready to go. The net is in the box behind my seat, leaded and corked with cowhorn spacers, I'll take the red net tonight for luck. We meet down on the slip, there's no coins. I cast the net out and we're off, drifting in the tide. We haven't waited for the seven stars. In fact, there's a full moon lighting our way. The shadows the boat and the net will cast will make it difficult tonight to catch any salmon, let alone the one that I want.